Hi there, and welcome back. In this case, welcome to my new shop. It's been a bit of time since the last video, and much of that time is me finding and leasing a big space like this. I say big, it's not super big, but it's certainly a lot bigger than the old basement. I'll do a shop tour video soon, but before that, I wanted to do a small build video just to get in the swing of things. In this case, I want to do a build video about this, the Shapeoko XXL. Now, I've already built the thing. Um, if you're not familiar, the Shape Shapeoko comes in a kit. It's a CNC router. So basically, if you've seen some of my stuff with CNC milling, it is a much more coarse, a less accurate version of that, but with a larger work area. You can make stuff like this, sort of out of wood, plastics, maybe even soft metals. The general idea is it's a pretty good way of doing computer-controlled uh, subtractive manufacturing, that is, removing material, um, on a reasonably large scale, say, you know, a meter by a meter, that's roughly the work area of this one, while at the same time not being outrageously expensive. Now, the Shapeoko is a great kit. I really enjoy building it, but it does have one small problem, and that is there's not quite as many safety features as I like. When I do machines, I like to have one of these, an emergency stop button, because when something's going south, the number one thing I want to do is stop the machine in its tracks. Now, the Shapeoko does not come with an e-stop button, and there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, it has two separate power cables. The router that actually spins the spindle and spins the milling bit, has one power cable, and then the movement controller, which controls the three axes and moves the actual spindle around, has a different power cable and is separate. Now, on older versions of the Shapeoko, that movement controller did have a couple of connectors for an e-stop button that you could put, hook something up, you hit the button, the machine would stop moving. But the spindle wouldn't stop. Remember, separate power circuit. So I want to fix all of that in one go. I want to basically put the whole thing behind one of these, a classic rotational e-stop button. If you've not seen them before, it's pretty simple. When the button is depressed, then the machine is off. When the button is raised, which you have to twist it to do, then the machine is on. The idea being that if you're in a power situation, but you want to just cut the power off, you slam the button down and the machine turns off. And crucially, you can't accidentally unpush the button. In, if, say you're reaching over the machine and trying to get something, you can't knock it on or off. You have to twist it to turn it back on again, and that makes it a lot safer. So I like these buttons. I have one with a laser cutter. It's great. I love them. I want to put one on this machine, but again, two power cables. So what do I do? Well, in this case, uh, I've bought a mains rated e-stop button where I can run the power through it. So that's the plan for today. We're going to do a little bit of soldering, a little bit of wire cutting, not too complicated. I think it's good to show that like, even for machines like this, and you know, a lot of classic like at-home power tools or small shop machines, it is not too hard to add a e-stop button if you want to. But for that, standing here is not going to help. I have to go to the new little studio I have and get out the soldering iron and a few tools. So let's go over there. So the first thing to do is to actually look at the switch. And I'm going to cut to the close-up camera so you have a better look at that. So it's a pretty standard uh, basic injection mode plastic case, a little wire grommet on there. And if we look at the actual switch body itself, we see four contacts. The way this works is there are two circuits here. These pair of contacts form one path, and these pair of contacts form the other path. Now, one set here is normally open, and one set is normally closed. That means that uh, depending on whether the button is in or out, a different set of contacts will be energized or conducting. So we want the machine to only run when the button is out, um, and we want to turn it off when the button is in. So we're going to pull the button out. We're going to use our multimeter here to double check the continuity and as the spec sheet says the contacts labeled 1 1 and 1 2 here are energized or they are closed when the button is out and we'll verify that the 2 3 and 2 4 here are not again push the button in at this point the number one contacts should be off and they are the number two contacts should be closed and they are so what that means is we verify we want to wire our live cable through the number one contacts. Now, in theory, for full electrical safety, if you're doing something like a circuit breaker, you want to always wire things so that you both your live and neutral shut off. But in this case, we're not making a circuit breaker. We know that we can't safely touch the wires on the other side of this, even when it's switched on or off. We're just cutting power to a machine. It's like a standard light switch or electrical socket switch. We're just gonna cut off one of the two legs of the AC circuit. In this case, the black wire here, the live wire. Now, this is my uh, US mains extension cable. Um, it is 
standard one end is a male American plug, the other end is the female socket version. Um, it is uh, rated to carry enough amps to run that machine's uh, router. It requires quite a few amps, as you can imagine. And I've cut it here in the middle with a pair of wire cutters. And then I've stripped off one of the ends. And I'm gonna show you to the other end of this. And again, this is not the best way of doing it. There are almost certainly gonna be electricians out there who uh, have a funny feeling passing over them right now. But basically the way this works is there is this uh, plastic sheath around the outside of the wires. And with a pair of manual wire cutters like this, you can very carefully score around the outside. And with a little bit of patience, because you want to be very careful not to just cut. If you cut, you may break the sheathing of one of the actual conductors inside, and that's bad times. You don't want that. It's uh, not going to help with the whole safety aspect of building an e-stop button now, is it? Okay, there we go. So through most of the sheath, a little bit of wiggling to use the plastic fatigue to get the rest of it off. And there we go. My other side is also free. Now, American wiring standard colors are that the white here is neutral, the black here is live, and that the green here is ground. For different countries, this varies. For example, back in the UK, ground is yellow and green. It's not green. Um, brown is involved as well. But generally, like you should look up the, color, the colors of the country's wiring and make sure you buy an actual approved thing that has the wiring colors correct. In this case, um, we know what they are. I've done enough American wiring at this point that I know what I'm doing. And so what we want to do here is we want to specifically have the two lives, these black wires, be the ones that run through our switch. And then we'll just bond the ground here together and we'll bond the neutral here together. So let's pull the switch over. And the first thing to do is to get both of these wires into this grommet. Now it's a pretty tight fit. Um, I bought a box here that would just about take the extension cables uh, doubled up like this. So I'm gonna feed them in and then really kind of jam them in here because they're a little bit squishy and they'll make it. Right, so slight cut there. I had to do a couple of things. First of all, I had to take this plastic nut and ream it out with a step bit to make the hole a little bit bigger because these cables are thick. And secondly, I've given myself a lot more room to play with on these wires here. So they get a lot more purchase um, and a lot more room to wire things up. Because the way this works is uh, the ends of the main black cables here going to sit inside this wiring area. So push those in and there we go. That's in and that uh, wiring where it feels pretty secure. So the next step here is going to be I think to go after wiring the grounds and the neutrals together first and then I'll tackle the lies being wired and switch large. Just I've got more room to work with these two wires. I want to bond them pretty close together. So first of all, I'm going to wire strip these smaller wires. And the nice thing about the smaller wires is that these strippers actually have holes for them. So I'm going to say uh, in American wiring gauge, which of course is the thing used over here, these are probably a 14 stranded. Let's see. All right, so now I have these all cut and I want to splice them together. Now, in this case, I'm probably gonna use a little bit of solder. Um, in theory, you can do a good purely mechanical wire splice. I have never been good at that. I like a little bit of solder in there just to keep the connection good. So I'm gonna go fetch my soldering iron and I'm also probably gonna get a little bit of heat shrink and a heat gun. So I'm gonna heat shrink these for a little like, extra bit of insulation. So uh, I'll go get those and I'll be right back. All right. Got my heat gun, got my heat shrink, got my soldering iron. Let's get these wires done. So I'm going to start with the grounds here, which is the green. I'm going to take these two wires. And again, there are good ways to do a wire splice. This is not one of those. I'm going to take a little bit of heat shrink, pop it over the end of the uh, wire. I always forget to do this pretty much on a regular basis. So put that there. I'm going to take the two wires. Now these are... Um, not solid core, they're stranded core, so they're actually a little bit easier to bond together. I'm gonna interleave them and then just twist the wires together like that to make sure I got a good electrical connection. 
I'm then going to put just a little dab of solder on those wires there just to make sure that they are not going to go anywhere. So heat up the wire with the soldering iron. There we go. That should help things a little bit. Let it cool down, tug it for a good mechanical connection test. And then I'm going to take my heat shrink and I'm going to slide that heat shrink over the wire. Now the thing with heat shrink is when you're soldering near it, you've got to be real careful to make sure it doesn't heat up, otherwise you'll shrink it prematurely. And this heat shrink is maybe a little bit too small for this, but just make sure it covers all the exposed ends there. That's shrunken nicely, so that's a good uh, interested connection. Same again for the neutral. Okay, cool. So those two are now both connected. They are insulated. There is no risk there of us getting any live AC out. And so the next step here is going to be to hook up the switch. So let me first of all strip these terminals, or rather strip the wires so they can go on the terminals. Let's go about there. Lovely. And the other side, like that. Great. So I'm going to twist the ends of the stranded wire together so they're a bit easier to work with. I'm then going to unscrew the one side of my switch, which as you remember earlier, we confirmed was the one that closes the circuit and conducts electricity when the switch is pulled up, which is the one we want. I am going to consider how I want to mount this because like I want to make this, uh, this wire grommet here be facing downwards, so I'll make sure the text is correct. So we're going to wire it this way around and feed, actually let's do the longer wire first, that's probably easier. So we'll feed that under this terminal here, like that, and get that secured. Lovely. And then we'll get the other side in there. We've got plenty of room in this box to have lots of spare wire, but uh, I don't like having too much wire sloshing around in there. It's never that great. So it's going to be a little of a tight one. There we go. In you go. Okay, maybe a bit more wire would have been sensible, but uh, at this point I'm stubborn. And we're going to get it done. There we go. In you are. All right. So we have those tightened down. So I'm going to first of all test that everything works because many projects over the years I have got so far and closed everything up and it's not actually worked. So we're gonna go bring back our friend, the multimeter and check that there is conductivity between the two sides. There we go. So the switch is currently up. So this should conduct between the live and the live. There we go. And then between the neutral and the neutral, lovely. And that should of course continue, which is down and the live here is cut off, which is perfect, that's working as intended. Uh, the thing with American 
plugs, which well, I'm not a huge fan of them, is useful, is uh, one blade is larger than the other. So you can tell which one is live, and which one is neutral um, from that. Though, of course, on most other plugs, you just know where it is in the triangle. Um, I mean, at least these have three prongs. The two prong ones, I'm not a huge fan. So this is good. I'm going to put some screws back in this, which I believe have fallen on the floor. Ah, yes. There we go. Screw this back together. I'll just put two in for now before we do our final test, but I do want to make sure the cover is mechanically secure before I put actual AC power through this. Okay, and now I'm looking around here to work out what to plug in to test it. And I think a small light is probably a good idea um, just to verify this is working. So I am going to make sure it's off. I'm going to go fetch a light and be right back. All right, so I have got a little RGB light here. It's a baby version of the ones floating the wall behind me with color. I've plugged my e-stop here into a socket in the wall. I plug the light into it. And as you can see, the switch is down, no current flowing. That's good. And let's make sure that when I have this on, there we go. Very lovely green light. Green for success, exactly. So that's the build. It's not a hugely complicated one, but uh, I wanted to start something pretty simple to make sure my setup here was working, everything was going well. So I'll be back with probably a shop tour and some more builds, but until then, I will see you next time.